All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Zero Dark Nerdy, the world's most notorious pop culture podcast. The filthiest of the filthy. This is your boy, Brian, a.k.a. El Nino, and today I'm joined with... Uh, me? Uh, hi, I'm Sarah. You can find me on Instagram as Sarah is loading. And, and we and, also have... And? <laughs> no, <buzz. laughs> oh, no, you're great. You no, know, I want to cut in. Uh, my name's Jeffers. I am a Twitch streamer at... Uh, just Jeffers Games, and I also just launched a, a Star Wars podcast uh, yesterday on my birthday. So Jawa, Jawa Chatter, a video nice. game. Happy nice. Birthday. Happy birthday. Happy <laughs> birthday, Jeffers. <laughs> just a little backstory out there. Sarah Chu has been a fan of the show for quite some time now. She's definitely been on a few episodes, uh, anime, everything from cosplay. That's how we've met her as the cosplay queen, queen <laughs> that she is. And Jeffers has been in, uh, honestly, just a, a great, great friend and a fan of the show. This is I'm glad to have him on the show. You went from, what, Texas to... Oh man. Still, right? oh, man. I grew up in Washington State, and then okay. I lived in Austin, Texas for the past seven years. And yes, now I'm in San Francisco. Goodness gracious. So how how is it, just out of curiosity, how is it living in one of the most expensive cities on like in the planet? If you would ask me that the first year I moved here, <laughs> uh, cru- soul crushing. Galaxy of this sucks, camel dicks! Uh, soul crushing. Uh, the second year, though, uh, going past the second year, it, it's actually pretty good. You, you, the first year is just really tough financially just being straight up gotcha gotcha we appreciate the honesty i've always i've always been curious i know it's one of the most expensive cities in the u.s so oh, in the world it's yeah world. Like, no it, it's very tough place to move to uh but i think after you adapt a bit and you know kind of adapt to not just the city but also like oh okay this is how much everything is uh then you know it, it gets easier it does so uh, again, Say, I, I feel for you because I live in probably the cheapest city in the United States in Philadelphia. Please don't ever <laughs> tell me your rent. You could just never <laughs> tell me. Oh, I, I yeah. Or, or mortgage, whatever you have. I just don't want to know. I, yeah, actually, mortgage is um, <laughs> cheaper uh, to buy than rent, but rent is also pretty. No, it's definitely not cheap to buy here. That's the sad part. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, thank you too for joining us so much. So today we're going to be doing a nice little episode. I'm sure a lot of our fellow fans have heard out there. Microsoft slash Xbox, same thing, has acquired Activision. <laughs> a couple fun facts out there for those of you who don't know. Microsoft is in case you don't know who Microsoft is, but <laughs> in, in, in terms of acquisitions, though, they're no stranger to this territory. Um, you know, we can go back to as far as uh, 2017, they bought GitHub for $7.5 billion. They yeah. bought Skype for $8.5 billion. And before they bought Activision, they uh, linked up in 2016 Oh my goodness. I don't have it on here. This is why we edit. (laughs) It just says Microsoft bought linked. Oh yeah. I'm sorry. So Microsoft actually bought LinkedIn. I was going to say you had. So yeah, I was right. (laughs) This is where autocorrect sucks because I had it as LinkedIn and then it autocorrected to literally linked slash in <laughs> like link the character from nintendo they just right. bought him they, yeah they went ahead and bought him <laughs> funny she says that these are just the conf- these are just the ones they actually managed to buy there are so right. many things that microsoft has tried to buy over the years and nintendo was one of them i, I heard about that. that yeah it, that. In, in, yeah. it was like 99 around 2000 uh they approached nintendo and nintendo laughed at them oh, roasted. Oh, roasted. <laughs> Wow. Do you remember how much that offer was worth, especially in 99? They didn't even get to that point. Yeah. They They just straight up laughed them out of the room. No, just like, nah, are you kidding? No. Wow. I can't even imagine who else Microsoft honestly approached. I mean, I'm sure they have many. They'll just buy whatever, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think they had to have been expecting that from Nintendo. Like, oh, probably. I mean, I don't own a company worth billions, like yet. No? But yet. <laughs> I yet. imagine yet. if I were, you know, trying to buy other companies, Nintendo's right. not one that I would have the confidence to think I could buy. I think Microsoft just likes to shoot their shot. You know? I know. I'm like, it's yeah. probably why I don't have a company like this. There's that, there's that, guy, <laughs> that guy at the bar. They just need one yes. Uh, they don't. They don't care. 
<laughs> like if we ask everybody, exactly, we'll get some somebody guesses. might say yes. Yeah, exactly. Everyone they buy are just the people that actually said yes. <laughs> True, and when they get the yes, it's actually like they're bringing home the trophy wife. It's not like they're bringing home the person that you wake up next to with the beer goggles on. It's like, oh, this person's still great. I yeah, might marry. They like shop for Nintendo, but they're like oh, Activision. Okay, like yeah. Yeah. not too bad. A casual seventy billion dollars. Yeah, exactly. So 68.7 billion, it's going to go into effect. Uh, they're predicting next year, but that is the plan. And in comparison, I, I think the, the next biggest acquisition that we've seen has literally been when Disney bought uh, Fox for $71 billion. So wow. we're talking just a couple and like, we're like, we're talking like it's chump change here, but just a couple billion dollars less than a movie conglomerate, which is Disney. I mean, right. and everything Wild. conglomerate. Yeah, I did know this is the largest video game acquisition in history, like yeah. by far. <laughs> I, mean, bought, I mean, Disney bought the entire Star Wars franchise for like five or six billion. So like right. that just really puts it into perspective of how much money they spent on this. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, as we get started on this, and, and Sarah, we'll start with you. Like, what was your just kind of initial reaction when this came through? Because I'm sure just like you and Jeffers and myself, I saw this, you know, come through my my news feed and in, in, in my phone in the morning, like, uh, you know, Microsoft. Well, at the time it said Xbox, but we all know Xbox is Microsoft. Microsoft mm -hmm. buys Activision Blizzard for this much money. And I was like, oh my gosh, they're getting ready to change the game. And, 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 and we'll get to this in a little bit, and particularly because my main complaint about Microsoft, especially in Xbox, is that their console-specific games are not as strong as PlayStation. And I think this does mm -hmm. get them in that playing field. Yes. Well, um, Jeffers, I don't know your background, if you're an Xbox gamer or PlayStation gamer. Um your thoughts on this, but I'm a PlayStation gamer, diehard. Absolutely. I thought it was, I kind of laughed when you asked me to be on the show. You're like, you know, I like only play PlayStation. Hater alert. And will not yeah. touch Xbox. Hater alert. It's all PC game, Nintendo, anything but Xbox. Boom. Roasted. Um, <laughs> but like you said, seeing it come through, like, you know, on my phone, the computer, like I just had this sense of kind of like you said, like, Things are going to change now. This is like the first step in the, I don't know, the future of gaming. And I don't know that I'm on board yet. I, I don't, we'll see. Um, but I, <laughs> like, yeah, this does change everything. I'm sure we'll get into it. But like the, um, I was like reading more about like Game Pass and net, like people who are Xbox gamers really love Game Pass. They're really excited for this acquisition. Um, it's going to make their game pass so much stronger um, where it's basically like a monthly subscription and you can just play like any of the games that Microsoft offers. Um, I think it's going to seriously um, compete with what like PlayStation's doing right now, which um, I mean, I'm okay buying my PlayStation games. I don't really want this game pass, so that's fine, but that's either going to put the pressure on PlayStation to compete with like a game pass or it's just going to take away from some of the revenue of people buying games that were, you know, once on PlayStation, but then are going to move to Xbox as exclusives. I don't know. What do you think, Jeffers? What's your um, gaming background? I want to make sure I do not rant. So somebody cut me off. They need to. Uh, so <laughs> oh, no, you're good. <laughs> I, I have a bad habit. My legit first reaction to this was an emotional one, which is rare for me. I'm not really like a respond emotional type person at first. Uh, I... I had an irrational thought that I really wanted the first thing to be when they announced this, that they're going to yeet that CEO out the door. <laughs> uh, because <laughs> that guy, he has just created such a toxic work environment, especially for women at Activision Blizzard. I mean, it's, it's been very known. It's been over the course of video game news for the past like plus year, but that was a silly reaction. Cause like it's one, it's not all the way done. It's gonna be 12 to 18 months. Right. And, you know, on top of that, like he still has to be the CEO technically. Uh, they kind of bought. I thought it. they were going to kick him out. <laughs> yeah, I, no, that, that I, is the plan. Yeah, <laughs> that, is the plan. Yeah, that is the plan. But when they first announced it, they were like, "Yeah, so and so he's going to stay in the CEO as he has been." And then, like later that day, they're like, "Well, once once it's done, like he's, he's going to walk over." over. Bit, I got so. the vibe it was one of those not to, but it was one of those like, "Hey, we want to do X, Y, and Z," and you know, Activision was like, "No," and they're like, "Well, we're going to buy your company and then make this happen." Yeah, they had to keep it 
the business had to keep it uh, chill. But uh, and then once I got past that, in terms of speaking on the consoles and what they're bringing to the table, uh, I am similar to Sarah in some ways. I prefer PlayStations, not because I don't really have any brand loyalty to any systems, honestly. At the end of the day, I just like, give me the games. I want to play the games that I enjoy. Like I have a Nintendo uh, Switch. I have a PS5. I have a Xbox One, not the new one, but the previous one. Uh, mm-hmm. And But for me... Uh, I don't I don't see the need to get the new Xbox yet because they don't have any what you call exclusives. And for those that don't know, exclusives are like they make or they have or they bring out third party games. Well, up until, you know, soon uh, it would be like Call of Duty and like multiplayer games, stuff like that. But it is ones under their umbrella that they make. PlayStation just is. And it's why the PS4, you know, beat the crap out of uh, Xbox One. They had so many. They just had mm-hmm. so many bangers that just sold and people just wanted those single player story experiences. And Xbox doesn't really have that. They just have like things that I uh, um, I think Sarah probably agrees with. Not really super, I, I don't not like them, but they don't pull me to buy it. Like I'm not a huge Halo person. Um, one of the only things I actually like was Forza Horizon. I don't even like racing games, but that one's more like a open world, beautiful experience type thing, not like a traditional racer. But overall, they don't bring anything to the table. However, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, at I believe it was the Game Awards or E3, they were unveiling how many studios, smaller studios they bought out. So this is classic mm-hmm. Xbox slash Microsoft. They're like, okay, we aren't competing. So this next generation, we need to. So they go and buy those out and then they make one of their own. And this move weirdly didn't surprise me that much. It did, but it didn't. Just like, oh, I just can't believe they paid, you know, 70 billion for it really at the end of the day. Right. Um, it was more just... I, I was because like they're still not really competing. I don't know if anyone's really like paying attention, but it, everyone's still buying Xboxes. But if you compare that to how hard it is to get a PS5, PS5 is hard to get, like by far. Still and, to this day. And yeah. Sarah, Sarah was on the episode where we were, you know, reviewing the PlayStation 5. <laughs> yeah. And that was, yeah. you know, a year and a half ago. And to this day, it's yeah. still hard to get a PlayStation 5 compared to the new Xbox. I, mean, yeah. I, I knew it too. Like I was telling like it was hard to get one on pre-order and I was like that might be your best chance for a while though it's not going to be available in three months like it's PlayStation 5 is going to be hard to get until like the last year of his life I think it's it's really interesting though because I I don't know now that they've done this they are literally going to be pulling Call of Duty and things like that into an exclusive I mean some people will argue and say no they're not going to do that there's too much money and I'm like you don't buy uh, a $70 billion. This is the same conversation mm-hmm. I had the last time they'd made a major purchase. It was uh, Bethesda and everyone, like people <laughs> I'd be streaming and they come and chat and they'd argue with me. They're like, nah, you don't, they're, they're not going to do that. They make too much money in Skyrim. I was like, you don't buy that big of a company and not make an exclusive. You just don't. And like, they're going to make it an exclusive. Yeah. yeah. I think they've stated that they weren't going to make it exclusive for at least know, a couple of games, but I agree with you. Time. Like that's not the end goal. There's probably already like contracts in place that they can't get out of, uh, exactly. but you don't spend that much money exactly. to not make it exclusive. And I think the purpose of all of this is to push their game pass. Like I think oh, yeah. um, Xbox, it's, they're going to change to basically a Netflix type model. Like they know they haven't been completing with competing with PlayStation for exclusives. Like, I don't think they're trying to, like, I think they know they can't, yeah. you know, I think they're just going after a complete, they're just doing something totally different, um, which it's like, if we can't have the best, we'll just have the breadth of games. Right. Cause I mean, especially in this day and age, when you see that you can literally go on Amazon and buy a old school arcade console co- console and play like a lot of the old school games you know, you're competing against that as well, whether if you're Xbox or PlayStation. So it's like you have that nostalgia feeling of bringing in the old games. And that is honestly, I will say Xbox's bread and butter right now is the game pass of bringing in a lot of these classics in there where PlayStation's like, yeah, but you know, our exclusive are their their money and they are. I mean, we're talking God of War. We're talking Last of Us. I mean, classics out there that Xbox their bread and butter has always been Halo, but unfortunately for them, they never really diverted from that and tried to grow from that. Right. Well, it's interesting though, because I think I, I think people always think of these two companies as like a console war. And I think we're getting, people might disagree, but we're getting away from that a bit. They're mm-hmm. just going in two different directions. 
And I think that's probably better for everybody. Xbox is going more the subscription base. They're going more like we have all these offerings uh, um, for this fee. Uh, you can just like have all this. They're going more of a budget route, which is great. I, I, I want everyone to be able to play games. They're expensive. Let's just be honest. They really are. Yeah. They're my main hobby. So like that, that's what I would I focus any little money I have into in San Francisco. Uh, <laughs> but like, and, actually that game pass is looking good now. No, yeah. And I, I have game pass. I don't, I don't use as much as I should, but like, it's, it's awesome. It, it's a great idea though. Uh, Sarah mentioned uh, PlayStation doing something similar. They already are working on it. There's a lot of reports of them already working on that, mm. which makes sense because I think it's, a, that's just more of a technology thing as well. We're just getting where things are just more subscription based, uh, which for better or worse, it's happening. Uh, though I think there's one thing interesting that I want to bring up about this acquisition. Mm -hmm. I think this means in the future, because Game Pass, if you just do the basic Game Pass, it's $10 a month in the US. If you do Game Pass Ultimate, I think it's 15. So that gives you PC mm -hmm. and uh, Xbox. But once this is like done, done, like I'm talking the future, because we know it's not like 100% done, mm -hmm. right? And all these come into the fold, come under the umbrella. I think it's almost a guarantee that in the near-ish future, we see the first price bump of Game Pass because they will have hooked everybody. Mm -hmm. They have all these games on their umbrella and they're like, well, now it's time to pay up a little bit because Game Pass doesn't really make you much money. But it's it's more to get people, people under your brand, not to sell consoles. Because quite frankly, even with all these, Xbox doesn't really have any exclusives because you can get them on PC and Xbox. They, they release everything on both. So I think they're just going to kind of pull the rug out a little bit. Yeah, um, I absolutely agree with that. I think they're going to wait to everybody. We've seen it like with Netflix, Uber, all these like services. They start out really cheap. They're not mm -hmm. making any money off of them. Um, from what I hear, um, game companies don't actually make money off consoles. It's like the games exclusives, the like extra stuff you spend your money on. Um, so I think they are going really hard after the subscriptions. Looked up some numbers. There's for Game Pass, there's 18 million subscribers right now. Call of Duty average monthly player base of 53 million. I said those numbers, right? 18 months. So like that right there. <laughs> yeah, just tell them that you're included. There you go. Audio. Charge them um, $10 a month. And then once, you know, people have moved over, then just $15 a month right there. Yep. Yeah. No, completely agree. And even according to the latest reports, Obviously, they're saying that the next three Call of Duty games are going to be available for both Sony and Microsoft consoles. But then after that, they're actually planning on, instead of doing a yearly release, maybe taking a step back, making it more, obviously, Microsoft and Xbox exclusive. Who knows? But the big thing is it's the mobile gaming as well. Like, the mobile gaming yeah. aspect of it is massive. Like, even when they, when they bought... Um, and that was the other one that I forgot to put on there that I believe it was Microsoft. I could be wrong about this, that they bought, um, uh, not World of Warcraft, I'm sorry. Well, I mean, technically they just yeah, did. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Minecraft, you know, and, and oh, that wow. one is- Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh, right. I totally forgot about that. Yeah, that's because they bought so many companies. Losing yeah. track. <laughs> right. It's easy to lose track. No, it is. <laughs> no, I was trying to look it up. I was like, okay, anything not Japanese, basically. <laughs> right. that. Because that's PlayStation. Yeah, yeah. they're just going in different directions, I think, at this point. And I think that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, really. Uh, I, I do worry just a little bit. Um, but at the same time, I, I think it's good that they plan on not releasing a Call of Duty game so consistently. It means they can actually spend, you know, or time developing a better game. Give me a hell yeah! And it coming out, you know, more released instead of having to, you know, do some huge patch day one maybe, or just, or just in general, maybe give it more oomph. Because let's face it, and if you're a fan of Call of Duty, I'm not, I'm not hating on Call of Duty all. It's not really my thing, but like, it is like a Madden in the sense that it's like the same, very similar every year. Um, right. So mix it up a little bit. Like Ubisoft did the same thing with their Assassin's Creed games. They were releasing them like every year because it's, it's just money, right? It's just like a guarantee. Like, well, why wouldn't we? It's like, why wouldn't we release a Fast and Furious? doesn't matter how good it is. It's going <laughs> to get money. Like, why wouldn't you? But I think some quality control would be great, honestly. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of like instead of, if you think of it, if a new game comes out every year, it's like you're paying like $60, $70 a year to keep playing the game yeah. versus the subscription model. They can just exactly. keep updating the game. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. 
Yep. And that, that's been the big thing with the, the, the newest Halo coming out is that it's supposed to be the last one. They're just going to continue, you know, supposedly to update it. That's the plan that this <laughs> will be the last Halo game you actually purchase, but they're just going to add on to it and keep going from there and there. And I definitely agree with you, Jeffers. I think to me with Call of Duty, just like I, that's a perfect analogy I could ever give to Call of Duty. It is like Madden. Like you can only do but so much. Yeah. Whether if it's, you know, with Madden, it's like, all right, well, this, if I hit this button, I'm going to hit this defensive player a little bit different where we're Call of Duty. It's like, oh, well, you know, if I level up this way, then I can get this weapon there. So it is getting very monotonous, which I mean, the best thing Call of Duty did was bring in that battle pass, obviously to, you know, compete with the um, Apex, Apex, uh, what was it? Fortnite, you know, of those of the world. Yeah, everyone. exactly. To bring in and on top of that, that multi console concept as well. Yeah. And I, I do think that we're still going to continue to see that even with this acquisition, the multi console concept is still going to be very strong in mm-hmm. every aspect of it, including mobile. Yeah. Yeah. They, so, sorry. sorry, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, I, no, I was just going to make a very quick joke. Do you remember what the last Windows was supposed to be? Um, was it supposed to be 10 or? 10, I think it was 10. Oh, weird. What Windows are we on now? <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't buy that. That's fine. They can say that all they want. Like, which care. Final Fantasy are we? <laughs> oh, there's actually a story behind Final Fantasy. They thought it was the only Final Fantasy game they were going to make. Well, yeah, yeah. Concepts. And then they're like, the well, company was gonna... going under. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, it was well, their well, last game. We're going to keep the name and make like 17 of these oh, yeah it was like their hail mary the company was going under like here we go and wild, right? um yeah and then they're like well this worked we're just gonna keep doing this <laughs> so do, you know as, as far as final thoughts of this accusation and and even some predictions you know what what are some things whether predictions or not or even let's just say a wish list what are some things that you think may happen from this or you would like to see happen from this accusation as far as gaming in general not just for microsoft and xbox but just in in the gaming world well something um i was thinking about just now when we we're talking about instead of having you know a year really update with the game just having one game that gets updated that was really making me think about pretty much the only game I played this past year which was Genshin Impact Mm -hmm. which is already doing that it you know kind of was revolutionary and that it was basically like Zelda an open world RPG where they are releasing new new world or new parts of the continent new story and it's there's not ever going to be a Genshin Impact 2, or I hope not. Um, that would be very frustrating because I've already invested so much into <laughs> my current players. They, they just keep giving us more game, and that's been wildly successful. And I think we're going to see more of that with these like big names, like Call of Duty. Yeah, I agree, Sarah. They're going the way of games as a live service. That That, that is what, whether people like that, love that, hate that. I'm not saying all games are going to be like that because you, yeah. a lot, I think, a lot for PlayStation, for example, is not going to go that way for the most part, at least not for a long time, but at least not all of them. But Xbox definitely seems more to be like in the, the camp of like games as a live service, like kind of how Madden should be that we just talked about. It should be more of an update every year instead of, you know, shelling out 60 to 70 dollars every year. And you could even make the argument the same as Call of Duty at this point. Uh, well, look, at least with Call of Duty, you have a higher ceiling, I think, of creativity. But if you're just if you're doing it yearly, you have no time to even think about what you could do creatively because you're just trying to pump them out because as soon as you're done with one, you turn around and start making the next one. But right. yeah, I think, I think it'd be more of a live service and then you can sit back and go like, what can we change? What can we really update? And that will give it, that'll make it better. Yeah. But uh, yeah, in terms of final thoughts, I don't know. I, I, I don't, it is a little worrisome when, if you think about it, I don't want to get like too in the weeds, but when you think about it, there's only about five companies, uh, for those that don't know, that in the, our country that own almost everything like i mean for the most part in terms of like uh entertainment like there's like five big conglomerate networks especially since disney bought out fox like we just said uh the video game industry is going to kind of go in the same way and it is scaring me a little bit i'm so fucking scared right now as somebody who really loves this community um it's hard because when you're an indie developer for a game you're living game to game like a paycheck like if you like if that next game you make doesn't sell anything or flops you're kind of screwed. But if you make an amazing game, you may either continue to make awesome games or get noticed by somebody else and get that paycheck. So I don't know. It. I just hope, 
we don't lose the creativity uh, for the gaming industry. That's my only concern. But, you know, what can you do? Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. To me, it's the creativity at, uh, aspect of it. I mean, I just saw Peter Dinklage come out today, and he was like, listen, HBO, take some chances out there. You don't have to keep doing Game yeah. of Thrones spinoffs. Yeah. And, <laughs> oh, exactly. Hell yeah. He's 100% yeah. correct. I mean, don't get me wrong. Am I excited for House of, uh, what is it, House of Dragons that's coming yeah, out? Yeah, House or, of Targaryen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, so yeah, I'm excited about it, but I think HBO is kind of banking on this to where they could bring in original ideas like companies like Netflix does with like an Ozark which is pretty mm-hmm. much like a, a Breaking Bad 2.0, but family edition instead of just a Walter White edition, <laughs> things like that. You know what I mean? So you have these different aspects out there, but yeah, I, I, I do fear, and this is for entertainment in general, you know, whether yeah. it's movies or everything else, but I, I think you're right, Jeffers. I don't want to get stuck into this rut to where it's all right. Now it's the next call of duty, but really it's just a couple <laughs> different guns. And then it's this. And then even oh. I will respect this as far as the grand theft auto franchise. I am glad that they take their time coming out. I mean, I have heard the, the next one coming out is going to be, you know, on a world of Warcraft kind of tip as far as open world, this, that, and the other. And honestly, I'm cool with that. Cause why kind of keep reinventing the real when you can just, continue with a very successful franchise and just keep updating it and make different missions and different things fun for everybody else. It's already, just like you said, Sarah, you're invested in it. You don't want to see a part two. You don't want to lose all your shit yeah. you ranked up to, you know what I mean? And then have to start all over again when they come out with a new game. I think that's what HBO yeah. thinks though, when they release, <laughs> I'm, just saying, I, I'm not, I don't even disagree with you. I'm just saying like, there is, it, it just comes down to money. Like I'm not trying to be yeah. like, you know, yeah. down the dumps. That's just sadly, that's just what it is. And like, I, I get that side of it. It's a business at the end of the day. I really do. Like that's not lost on me. Uh, but yeah, I guess I, I think we can have room for both. Let's have room for the consistent updates uh, in the same titles. There's nothing wrong with that. I know a lot of people love these games. They Some people can only buy one or two games a year. I'm not against that. As yeah. long as we can still keep up some creativity in between and some single player stories and just like uh, it, there's room for everything in my opinion yeah. and thankfully we have sony and this conversation with like this is why i love japanese media and anime it's not all of it, it's just remakes of something in the past like and i like all you know all the media that comes out now i just don't want to see the same story eight different times so oh. that's my i guess my ending thoughts on that thankfully we have sony for some creativity <laughs> agreed my, my ending thoughts as far as this subject goes, I grew up as a big fan of the EA Sports big line. So I would love to see any kind of a valid remake of SSX Tricky, which to me is still one of the like the best snowboarding games of all time. Yeah. I love the NBA Street. I love the NFL Street. I'd like to see some more of those games come back out, especially in like a pay, like a like a pass kind of thing. Obviously, you don't have to go out and buy it. But if they could bring those in and bring in the graphics, almost kind of like what they did a couple of years ago when they did the remake of Tony Hawk 1 and 2, I would love to see that. But I don't want to have to go out and buy the game. If you could just have it on, you know, your pass, whatever it is, I would love to see that because those are some of the, you know, it's just those no, no-nonsense games where you don't really have to think that much. It just visually looks cool. It's fun to play. Yeah. And you hit a couple of buttons and you're having a good time. <laughs> Games can just be fun. There's nothing wrong with that. That that brings up a good point, though. Do you want to see any resurrected, left behind franchises? Because Activision has quite a few of them, actually. I am really glad you brought that up. And to me, I, I think out of the ones that Activision owns, that I would like to see brought back up. And they could obviously come out with a, a new guitar. And I know you're where I knew this is where you we're... know where I'm going with it. <laughs> You know, I, I would like to see the guitar. I mean, which granted, there's only so much you can do with it, but I would like to see the Guitar Hero franchise come up in the, with the new consoles, you know, as far yeah. as the new graphics, the new visuals. I mean, hell, nowadays, just with the, the processors the way they are, you, you could, they, I'm sure they could just take your face and put you in the actual music oh, yeah. video yeah, probably. of whatever band that you're playing with, you know, so it doesn't have to be just, oh, you're playing as Tom Morello. Now it's, you're playing as Tom Morello, but it's your face on Tom Morello's face, <laughs> you know? So taking the new technology and then br- and bringing life to that franchise, honestly, I, I think it would go over great. Oh, I think it would too. Yeah. I mean, the Guitar Hero was big for uh, people who didn't even play games, honestly. So, right. And if we can bring back sitcoms that have been off the air for 15 to 20 years, I'm pretty sure you can bring back Guitar Hero and probably like, success. I'm pretty sure Guitar Hero was in Gossip Girl. 
Like that's how like, <laughs> big it was. <laughs> There's a little birdie that's about to be free. There you go. There you go. There's your answer. Uh, I think it'd be interesting to bring back, which is weird because, like, uh, Sarah, I don't know how long you've been playing PlayStation, but uh, Activision's actually the one that owns Spyro. But when I think of Spyro. And Crash Bandicoot. And Crash Bandicoot. Those but, are PS1 um, right. kind of like mascots, basically. Yeah, exclusives, yeah. really. It's yeah, I was going to say, I was like, is this dirty? Like, if I say this, <laughs> no, <laughs> like, not at so all. messed up if they brought them back. Uh, yeah, they're going to, br- I mean, that would be cool to bring them back. I mean, we, uh, Crash is going to see the fight. Back. You know there'd be a fight between them, <laughs> like oh, an yeah. epic battle if they did that. Yeah. So what the hell is Edge doing oh, here? No. Oh my God! This is ugly. An execution! An execution!